Azar decided it was time to introduce the true gods to Ibrahim. They walked back to the temple. This time they climbed to the top of the temple to an open area. Once more, he noticed the priests deeply fully immersed in worship, all fixated on a single shining star. Then the star disappeared. After a short while, the priests turned their attention to a bright ring appearing. Within moments, an illuminated moon started to become visible, and once again, the priests initiated their worship towards it. However, the moon also eventually disappeared. A short while later, the eastern horizon started to brighten. The priests shifted their attention towards the emerging light in the east and continued their rituals as the sun rose. Throughout the day, the priests continued their prayers towards it. Yet, as the day concluded, the sun, like the star and the moon before it, also disappeared. Ibrahim declared, O oh my people, I reject what you worship. I worship the creator of the skies and the earth, and I won't be among those who worship multiple gods. Through these interactions with his people, God strengthened Ibrahim's certainty. God chose him as a prophet and provided guidance to him, despite his youth in his teenage years. The priests surrounded Ibrahim, enraged at his blasphemy. They threatened him with their god's anger. Ibrahim answered their empty threats, saying, I'm not scared of the gods you believe in. Azar quickly took Ibrahim out of the temple and led him home. As soon as they entered their house, Ibrahim turned to his uncle with compassion in his eyes and asked, Uncle, why do you worship something that can neither hear nor see and holds no benefit for you? Uncle, knowledge has come to me that has not come to you, so follow me and I will guide you to a straight path. Ibrahim wanted his uncle to understand that worshipping false gods was pointless and would lead to severe punishment. Azar's reaction was anything but friendly. He shouted, Ibrahim, are you rejecting my gods? If you don't stop, I will stone you. Stay away from me forever. After closely observing Ibrahim throughout the day, Azar had lost hope of guiding him. He wanted to disown him, and if Ibrahim refused to leave, Azar was ready to use the most severe punishment he knew, stoning him to death. Ibrahim left his uncle's house disappointed, yet hopeful that he might one day come around. In the following months and years, Ibrahim tried tirelessly to talk sense into his people, but only a few of them eventually believed. Among the first believers were Ibrahim's cousins, Lut and Sarah, who were siblings. They were incredibly righteous and immediately accepted Ibrahim as a prophet when he first declared his prophethood. As the years passed, Ibrahim and Sarah grew older and decided to get married to each other. Sarah had inherited a significant fortune from her father, which included an enormous piece of land and a large herd of livestock. She willingly gave her entire fortune to Ibrahim to support his mission. Ibrahim skillfully managed it well, growing his land and livestock holdings. Eventually, he became the wealthiest man in the city.